بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ مربی زدنی علماء صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمدللہ رب العالمین The topic of this lecture is important questions of sampling and estimation. For this lecture, I am using the work of my best student, Ms. Bisma Sami, of class 2021, the Lyceum. An important advice for me and for everyone, we should be soft to others. Question number one. Make sure you read the question carefully so that you will be able to extract the given information easily. The time taken t minutes for a special anti-rust paint to dry was measured for a random sample of 120. This is the sample size ns. The sample mean that is x bar is 51.2 and an unbiased estimate of the population variance was 37.4. This is sigma cap square. Determine a 99% confidence interval for the mean drying time. So 99% uh, means 99.5%. This area is 99.5% and to get the corresponding value of this area, you can either use your calculator or use uh, inverse normal, phi inverse. When you will do phi inverse 99 point, uh, 0.995, you, you'll get this number. So uh, this is case C of uh, confidence interval whenever we have sigma cap square it's case c and this is the formula of confidence interval of mu uh, when sigma cap square is involved the formula is x bar this is the sample mean z which is this 2.576 this is sigma cap and this is ns so x bar is given 51.2 z is 2.576 and sigma cap is 37.4 underwood and ns is 120. When you will do this calculation, you will get this thing. This is the confidence interval for mu. And the advantage of this confidence interval is, this is an extra work. This is not required in this question. I mean, why do we find confidence interval? We, we basically find confidence interval to estimate the value of mu. So when we will take the average of these two values of confidence interval, we can get the value of mu. Although this is not required in the question, but since this is the first question, so I just wanted to uh, explain you all the purpose of this confidence interval. What is the purpose of this confidence interval or any confidence interval? Basically, we find confidence interval to estimate the value of uh, mu. And this is the way to value estimate the value of mu. So this was question number one, an easy question of three marks and remember this formula. If you know the formula, you can easily find the answer. And make sure uh, you have watched uh, my lecture on the concepts of sampling before uh, watching this lecture. If you haven't watched that lecture, so first watch that lecture and then watch this lecture. I strongly recommend uh, you to watch uh, my first lecture on sampling to understand the concepts of sampling and estimation well. Question number two. A consumer group interested in the mean fat content of a particular type of sausage takes a random sample of 20 and sends them away to be analyzed. The percentage of fat in each sausage is as follows. Assume that the percentage of fat is normally distributed. Now this is important, the distribution is normal. When distribution is normal and variance is known, then the case is case A. See, standard deviation is known. So this combination says this is case A. And there is no need to use CLT here. Now the question is 98%, construct 98% confidence interval for mean, mu. Population mean means mu. So first we need sample mean and this is the formula of sample mean. And you can easily get sample mean through this information and the, its answer is 31. And this is the uh, case A, confidence interval for case A. X bar, the sample mean, 
z sigma over n s so by substituting all the values into this formula we can get the confidence interval and the confidence interval is 98 percent so this area will be 99 percent i discussed this thing in detail in my first lecture so uh, the next part the manufacturer claims that the mean percentage of fat in sausages of this type is 30 the manufacturer is claiming that mu is 30 use your answer to part one use this confidence interval interval in fact to determine whether the consumer group should accept this claim so for that you just need to look this number in this confidence interval if this number lies in this confidence interval then the uh, manufacturer's claim will be justified since this number is in this confidence interval therefore the manufacturer's claim is justified or you should accept his claim yes 30 lies in, within confidence interval so his claim is justified this answer is fine but if you want you can add this as well the manufacturer's claim is justified or you can accept the claims of manufacturer now the next question this question is very simple the result of a memory test is known to be normally distributed now this is the name of the population it's normal so this will be case a why because standard deviation is also given when standard deviation is given and when uh, distribution is normal when we have these two things then this will be case a now it's uh, it is required to have 95 percent confidence interval for mu 95 percent confidence interval for mu the formula of that confidence interval is this you must know that formula but uh, i'm just writing this formula here this is the formula for 95 percent confidence interval for this case and the width is less than 2.0 find the least possible value of n so this is the way to uh, get the width i mean when you multiply this quantity by 2 you can get the width it's here so by it's it's given that width is less than 2.0 so this quantity should be less than 2.0 z is 1.96 because it says 95 percent so this area will be 97.5 percent so this number is 1.956 or 1.96 both numbers are fine but usually we use 1.96 so this student is using 1.96 here so 1.9 is the standard deviation and we are working for n so the answer of n is 14 if you know the formulas if you know the cases and if you know the formulas you can easily solve the questions of sampling sampling is very simple but make sure you understand the concepts of sampling well before solving the questions that is why i'm asking you must watch my first lecture on this topic question number four packets of cat food are filled by a machine in a random sample of 10 packets we have these information weights and grams find unbiased estimates of population mean and variance population mean means mu cap and sigma cap square so number one get x bar this is basically unbiased uh, estimate of population mean x bar is also known as mu cap so x bar or mu cap means same thing you all know we did this in point estimates so this is x bar and mu cap this is the population and bias estimate of population mean if you if you write only x bar it's perfectly fine no problem sigma cap square this is the formula of sigma cap square we did this in uh, our first lecture 
and sigma x square you just need to uh, take the sum of the square of these numbers to get sigma x square you can do this in your calculator square of this plus square of this plus square of this and so on and make sure you will put the whole value never round your value substitute the ex whole value like the entire value here here everywhere so this is uh, uh, the sigma cap square and make sure you will use this answer in the later part if you have to use don't use the estimated answer never use estimated answer in the later parts always use the more accurate value in later parts now the second part in a random sample of 200 packets 38 were found to be underweight calculate 96 percent confidence interval for the proportion population proportion means we did this as well it's ps we need conf confidence interval for ps and the formula of ps the confidence interval for ps is this we just need to uh, first get the 98 percent 98 percent is 2.055 and uh, the second thing is get PS, QS and uh, use this formula for confidence interval. So PS is here, Z is here and this entire thing is here and this is the confidence interval for PS. Let me explain you, uh, the question was 96%, although I have explained this in my first lecture but I just want to explain this here. How did I get, how did uh, we uh, get 98%? What's the logic of this? So let me explain this here. see uh, it was 96 percent required so these two areas will be same and all both uh, are equal to two percent each so this total area this total will be 98 percent this is the logic of 98 percent so when it says 96 percent then you have 98 percent area this total area is 98 percent because 96 plus 2 makes 98 if you want to take the screenshot of this question you can solution of this question this question is important uh, we need uh, in this question we had to find uh, mu cap and sigma cap square and then we had to uh, construct the confidence interval 96 percent confidence interval for ps which is here this is the whole solution and this is the logic of this 98 percent those who know i mean who, who knows uh, those who know the concepts of confidence interval of this thing they know uh, how to write 98 percent so this is not required to write this thing here uh, you can directly write you can directly write 98 percent now the next question is 5 over a long period of time it is found that amount of sunshine on uh, any day's particular town of, uh, in Spain is 6.7 and standard deviation 3.1 so this is uh, uh, the uh, x uh, distribution of population it's uh, and the distribution is unknown so mean is 6.7 and standard deviation is 3.1 and the sample size is large so according to clt the distribution of x bar is normal here distribution is unknown but when uh, standard deviation is known and sample size is large uh, in fact when sample size is large according to clt the distribution of x bar is normal so this is case uh, b of confidence interval for mu now we need this probability uh, sample mean uh, mean of 300 sample is between this so x bar make sure you write x bar here 6.5 and 6.8 and the formula of z is very simple 6.5 minus mu upon this entire thing in under root same is here and you all know how to uh, uh, solve this part you all you all have done this in s1 so i'm not discussing this thing here 
this will uh, uh, make this lecture very long so you have done this in s1 you should know how to calculate this thing give a reason why it is not necessary to assume that the daily amount of sunshine is normally distributed to carry out the calculation because sample is large when sample is large then uh, according to clt x bar is normal so there is no need to assume that population is normal they are basically saying that did you assume that x bar is normal we didn't assume that x bar is normal because when population is not unknown then we cannot assume that population is normal we basically go to clt so we did not assume this thing i'm writing this here we did not assume this we in fact use clt because for large sample size according to clt x bar is normal this thing question 6 okay i will leave the repeated things after this question because uh, see again they are asking find unbiased estimates of population mean and variance we already have done this thing so in this question after this question i will leave uh, this part unbiased estimates so mu cap or t bar is sigma t over n this is the unbiased estimate for population mean mu cap and with the help of this information and this information and this formula we can get sigma cap square this is sigma cap square unbiased estimate of population variance now we need 94% confidence interval for mu population mean means mu for that uh, number one we have to understand uh, if the population is normal or not since uh, name of population is not given and sample size is uh, large so and we we estimated sigma cap square so this is case c the formula of confidence interval for this case is this and since we need 94% confidence interval therefore this area will be 97% and this number is 1.82 this is true inverse normal so by substituting the values of uh, all the quantities into this formula we can get this confidence interval you can take the screenshot of this solution if you want question number 20 well ellen wishes to choose one child at random from the 11 children in his class the children are number 2 to 12 ellen throws ellen then throws two fair dice each numbered 1 to 6 and choose the child whose number is the sum of the score on the two dice explain why this is an unsatisfactory method of choosing a child because not all totals have same probability see if the number is 7 if the sum of two number is 7 then these are the possible outcomes for 7 i mean 3 plus 4 makes 7 4 plus 3 makes 7 5 plus 2 makes 7 so we have these possibilities to get number 7 total 7 and this is the probability of this number it's 1 upon 6 whereas the probability of uh, 12 number 12 is just 1 upon 36 since probabilities are not same not all total have the same probability so this method is not fair now describe briefly a satisfactory method of choosing a child this is so simple you can use drawing lots method you can write down all the uh, you can just assign the i mean just write down all the numbers on a piece of paper put them in a box and then take out the samples of the required size at random this question is important question number 21 i will leave uh, the uh, this first part because this is of unbiased estimates uh, you can just go through the solution if you want i'm interested in this part whenever we estimate sigma cap square the case is c we always use this formula for confidence interval 
we need 97% confidence interval for mu this is the formula 97% means 98.5% so this means just a minute to be on a safe side I'm writing 98.5% although it's uh, everyone knows it's 98.5 see the uh, number is 2.17 this is 2.17 it's here so this is the confidence interval for you now this part is very important uh, this confidence interval means now number one understand what is meant by this confidence interval this confidence interval means you are 97 percent sure that uh, your uh, mu lies in this interval and you are 3% unsure that mu lies in this interval. So if you have 100 samples, then out of 100, 90, in 97 samples, you are sure mu lies in 97 samples. And you are unsure that uh, mu does not lie in this sample, these three samples. So 97% confidence interval means uh, out of 100 samples, we are sure that in 97, on average, in 97 samples, uh, mu lies. So, in 300 samples uh, of 130 balls, same size, a 97% confidence interval is calculated. How many of these intervals would you expect not to contain mu? This is so simple. I mean, in 300 samples of 97% confidence interval, you know mu includes in these number of samples, I think 291. So in nine samples, uh, mu will not include. 3% don't have mu, so 9 samples, because this is this for just for your conceptual clarity, because 97% uh, have mu, so 3% don't have mu, so 3% 3 of 300 make, makes 9, so this question is very important. You can take the screenshot of the solution if you want. Well, if you need uh, this solution, uh, if you need uh, the uh, this solution, you can just uh, WhatsApp on this number for the solution, the PDF file. This is the number three three zero double three six four five seven triple one two. So if you WhatsApp on to this number, then you'll get the PDF of this solution. Now question number 23. The weights in grams of oranges grown in a certain area are normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. A random sample of 50 of these oranges were taken. 97% confidence interval for mu is given. Fine, unbiased estimates. So this is so simple. By taking the average of this confidence interval, we can get mu cap. And you know, with, with the help of width formula, we can get sigma. This is the formula of width. And by using uh, this formula, we can get sigma. Width of this confidence interval is 10. And this, it says 97%. So 97% means 98.5%. So the value of Z will be 2.17. Second part, estimate the sample size that would be required in order for 97% confidence interval for mu to have with 8. This is so simple. You just need to use with formula. Use with 8. And then substitute the values here and get N. Question number 24. The lens of swing needles needles in travel uh, swing kits are distributed normally with mean mu and standard deviation 1.5. This is case A. A random sample of N is taken. Find the smallest value of N such that the width of 95% is at most 1 millimeter. At most means less or equal. 
in continuous uh, distribution uh, equal does not matter if you don't write it's fine yes. they both means the same thing in continuous distribution but since most of the students uh, know that at most means less or equal that's why i wrote equal here otherwise the sign is also fine so we have to use with formula this is the formula of with and it's given w is less than equal to 1 so with the help of this formula we can get n see sampling is very simple if you know the concepts well you can easily do the questions you just need to uh, use the uh, right formula in the uh, right question in the question 25 the weights of pebbles on a beach are normally distributed with mean this standard deviation this this is normal distribution find the probability that the mean weight now this means x bar this thing random sample of 5 is greater than 51 grams so this x bar is normal because when uh, distribution is normal and sigma square is known then x bar is uh, approximately now x bar is always normal for any sample size this is case a of confidence interval situation so we need this probabilities this is so simple you just need to use this formula of z x bar minus mu over this thing in under root that's the answer I'm just making this sketch for those who don't understand how to uh, evaluate this part. This sketch is not compulsory, but just for their knowledge. This is 0.4508. We need this area. And you all know how to get this area. So I'm not, this will be one minus five, this number. This is for those who are not my student. My student basically use new calculator and they uh, basically find this area first and they subtract uh, uh, this area. In fact, uh, they subtract this area from 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minus this area. Those who are using latest uh, model of calculator, they can use this method. All my students use this method. They uh, find this area first and then they subtract this area from 0 0.5 to get this area. And the other student basically use this method 1 minus 5.4508. That is perfectly fine. They can use this method. Both methods are fine. Well, the next part is find the probability that the mean weight of n is less than 51.6 is this probability this is the inverse normal question this is so simple you all know how to solve this question uh, let me just uh, explain you how to get this uh, value of z this value so you all know when we do inverse normal uh, when we have greater sign we shade in this way so we have to shade this area so this area is here 0.9332 so this number is minus 1.50 and the answer is 36 you must be good at normal distribution if you want to uh, do questions of sampling and you have done uh, normal distribution in S1 I will soon make the lecture on normal distribution for A1 students. So if you are, if you find difficulty in normal distribution, if you are finding difficulty, then you should watch those lectures. This is the question number 26. There are 18 people in Millie's class to choose a person at random. She numbers the people in the class from one to 18 and presses the random number button on her calculator to obtain a three digit decimal. Millie then multiplies the first digit in this decimal by two. She multiplied by two decimal and chooses the person corresponding to this new number. Decimals in which the first digit is zero are ignored. 
give a reason why this is not satisfactory method of choosing a person multiplying the digit by 2 gives only even number so odd numbers not included that is why this method is not satisfactory whenever you multiply any number by 2 you get you always get an even number so odd numbers are not included therefore this method is not satisfactory here we need a uh, merely obtain a random sample of 5 and this is her uh, number sample numbers heights are known to be normally distributed with variances and we need the 98 percent confidence interval so first get a uh, mu x bar of this information this is x bar and use this formula case a x bar plus z sigma over under root n so this is the confidence interval next question 27 this student is outstanding a brilliant uh, student and um, you, you can say uh, uh, the best student she is my best student uh, she did uh, this work in no time and this work shows um, this student is uh, an intelligent and hardworking and the best student in fact she is my best student and may Allah bless her with a more success. Alhamdulillah. Ameen. A random sample of n people were questioned about their internet use. 87 of them had a high speed internet connection. Uh, this is the sample size. A confidence interval for proportion is this. Write down the midpoint. So, midpoint is this. By taking average, we can get the midpoint and hence find n. So, by using the uh, formula of P, as we can get n. This is the formula of PS. It's x upon n. So, P is 0 0.15, 145. This is PS. Midpoint is PS. So, n is 600. This interval is alpha percent. Find alpha. This is so simple. First, get value of z. I mean, always use with formula for this type of question. So the width of this interval is this, then this is the formula of width, then get the value of z. This is the value of z. Now utilize this value in this sketch. So this 2.23, 2 double three is here and here. So if you use your calculator, if you are using latest uh, version of the calculator, latest model, then you just need to put this as lower value and this as upper value and get this area. And this is alpha percent. Otherwise, you just need to find this area first. Get this area. If you are not using the latest model of calculator, then get this area. And this area will be 1 minus this and this. Both areas are same. This student used this method. She found this area. This area is this. And then she did this method 1 minus this and this. So it's 97.4%. But if you are using the latest model of calculator, then you can uh, put this number as lower limit, this as upper limit in calculator, and calculator will give you this area. You can take the screenshot of this solution if you want. Twenty-eight. The heights in grams of certain type of apple is modeled by random variable x with mean 62 and standard deviation 8.2, random sample of 50. So distribution is unknown. When distribution is unknown for large samples, we always use CLT. Describe fully the distribution of x bar. Since n is greater or equal to 30, therefore uh, CLT is used. And according to CLT, the distribution of x bar is normal is approximately normal we discussed this thing in detail in my first lecture i discussed in fact so for large samples we use clt and according to clt x bar is approximately normal so this is mean and this is variance now the second part we need this probability so this is so simple uh, 64 minus uh, this mean and this standard deviation uh, uh, sorry, this is a 1.34 over uh, n. 
n is uh, 50. So use this thing here. Thirty-nine. In a survey of thousand randomly chosen adults, six zero five said they use email. So you can easily get the proportion of those six zero five over thousand. Ninety percent confidence interval for proportion. So this is the formula for proportion, and ninety percent means this is ninety-five percent. So this is one point six four five, and you can easily get this. Number one, part A, give a reason why sampling would be required in order to reach a conclusion about the mean height of adult males in England. Because population is too large. Population, when population is uh, very large, then we uh, do sampling. The mean weight that can be supported by a single cable of certain type without the cable breaking. Because testing involves repeated destruction. When you test all the uh, uh, items of the population, then this uh, can destroy the population. So when you do sampling, you have to open the packets, you have to open the uh, like wires. So this could destroy your population. If you will open all the packets, this will destroy your population. So testing of all items involves destruction. I'm leaving this part, unbiased estimates, we have done uh, at least three or four types of questions of this type, three or four questions of this type in fact. So this is the solution, you can do this yourself. Now the next part is a further random sample of 60 sacks of potatoes is taken using your values of this part, find the probability that mean is ex mean a sample mean exceeds 19.73. This is so simple, you just need to get this probability. So C, x bar is 19.7, sigma square is this, so x bar is normal, approximately normal because sample size is greater, so because of CLT, this is normal. So this is the way to get the, this probability. Now the next part, explain whether it was necessary, yes it was because population was unknown. Since sample size was large, uh, large sample size, so distribution of x bar and distribution of x is uh, unknown. So when sample size is large and distribution is unknown, we always use CLT. You can uh, take the screenshot of this question if you want. Solution of this question. You can take this as a whole if you want. Remember this, when sample size is large and when population is unknown, we always use CLT. Thirty-two, the editor of a magazine wishes to obtain the views of a random sample of readers about the future of the magazine. A sub-editor proposes that they include in one issue. This is the problem. If you just uh, give the question on one issue then the readers of that particular issue will answer the question only and less busy uh, people will answer the question or more committed people uh, can answer the question so uh, the question is a sub editor proposes that they include one issue of the magazine for readers to complete and return give two reasons why this method is uh, not a random so because only readers of that specific issue included and only less busy people responded. Because if you include just one issue, if you discuss just one issue, then only other, the people uh, concerned with that issue, only readers of that issue uh, will answer the question. So only readers of that specific issue included, only less busy people responded. Uh, the editor decides to use uh, a table of random numbers to select a random sample of 50 from this range. These uh, regular readers are numbered from 1 to this. The first few numbers are 
obtained from this use these numbers to select first three numbers in the sample this is so simple you just need sample in this range three samples so the first number will be four nine seven five the next seven eight zero two is out of the range so you need to discard this so the next will be three nine five two and the next will be zero three eight six you have to discard the numbers which are out of the range and the last will be zero double eight two so this is the sample one two three you need three pupils so you have to discard the number which is out of the range and you have to omit the numbers which are repeated in this case we don't have any repeated number but this number was out of the range now i will leave him simple questions uh, this second part is good so i'm are taking this question we need 99 percent confidence interval sample size is 65 and according to clt uh so sorry it's given it's normally distributed and standard deviation given so this is case a you don't need to use clt here because population when population is normal and sigma square is known then uh, we never use clt Okay, sample size is 65, has a mean mass of this. We need 99% confidence. So, populate. since uh, x bar is normal, since x is normal, therefore x bar is normal. And with values, uh, I guess it's uh, mean, uh, is, is it given? It's uh, 1.0. This is population x. So when population is normal and a sigma square is known, then we never use CLT. So this is the confidence interval. This is case A. The manufacturer claims that the machine produces sweets with a mean of 30 grams. Now this is the claim of the manufacturer. Since this number does not lie in this range, therefore his claim is not justified. Now the question is use the confidence interval found in part one to draw a conclusion about this claim so you will say the claim is not justified because 30 does not lie in this interval another random sample of 65 sweets produced by the machine is taken this sample gives 90 uh, a different 99 percent confidence interval that leads to a different conclusion from that different conclusion means you are accepting his claim Assuming that mu has not changed, explain how this can be possible. This is so simple. I mean, uh, since confidence interval is variable, therefore, another confidence interval uh, may include this number. So the answer is confidence interval is a variable. Thirty-four. Uh, I'm leaving first part. Uh, this is case C. We need 95% confidence interval. All the informations are given. Now I'm just solving this part B. Discussing this part B. Probability that alpha percent confidence in interval includes only values that are lower than the population means 1 upon 16. This is 1 upon 16. This part is very important. The probability that an alpha percent confidence interval includes only values that are lower than the population mean. So mean lies in this range. This is very important. This confidence interval means mean lies here. So less than mean means this probability. This area is given. 1 upon 16 means this area. And because of symmetry, this area will be 1 upon 16. And you can easily get this alpha. Alpha is 1 minus 1 upon 16, 1 upon 16. So 87.5%. Make sure you understand this concept well. Mu is here. Mu lies in this region. So less than mu means this area. 1 upon 16 means this area is given. And we got this area because of symmetry. And total area is 1. So alpha is 1 minus these two. Thirty-five. X is a random variable having binomial distribution a random sample of 60 so this is uh, according to clt normal the distribution of x bar is normal because when sample size is greater or equal to 30 then x bar is approximately normal 
2.8 we need this probability so uh, NP is 3 and variance is 9 upon 4 and this is 60 we use CLT here In binomial, the mean is NP. So mu is 3 and this sigma square is 9 upon 4. And this is the way to solve this. Next question. A doctor wishes to investigate the mean fat content in low fat burgers. He takes a random sample of 15 burgers and sends them to a laboratory and he found these things. Assume that the mass in grams of fat low, uh, is normally distributed. This, this is case A with st and standard deviation is given. First get x bar. Calculate 94. 9%. So this is so simple. You have to use KSA. First get X bar, sample mean, use this formula and get the 99% confidence interval. Explain whether it was necessary. No. You cannot use central limit because population is normal and sigma square is known. As population is normal, so X bar is, all, is also normally distributed. Well, the manufacturer claims that the mean of mass of fat in burgers of this type is 8, eight grams. The manufacturer claims that the mean mass of fat in burgers of this type is 8 grams. Use your answer to part 1 to comment on this claim. Since 8 lies in this interval, this 8, therefore his claim is justified. Thirty-seven. I am leaving this part, uh, proportion 1. Give a reason why your interval is only approximate because variance use is an estimate. C. In a random sample of 70, 18 were found to be undersized. So this is PS, 90%. This is here. And why your interval is an approximate? Because variance is an uh, estimate. We, we estimate variance. We don't have true variance. We, when we make confidence interval of proportion, we estimate variance. Thirty-eight. Previous records have shown that number of cars entering uh, Bampur, Bampur on any day has mean this and variance this. Find the probability mean number of cars of sample is, this is so simple. So since n, n is greater than 30, so according to CLT, x bar is normal. We need this probability. This is so simple. You can easily do this. State with the reason whether it was necessary to assume the number of cars entering uh, B on any day as normal distribution. Uh, no, there is no need to assume the population is normal since N is greater than 30, so CLT was applied. We don't assume the population is normal when it's not given. When we have large sample size, when sample size is large, then we always use CLT. Next part. It is thought that the population mean may recently have changed. The number of cars entering B during the day was recorded for each. Okay, we have to leave this question because this involved testing of hypothesis. So I'm leaving this part. You should not do this part. You should do this part with testing of hypothesis. That is why this student left this question. I'm leaving this first part. We need unbiased estimates. This is the formula of mean and this is the formula of unbiased estimate of variance. You can easily get these two things. Number next part is a random sample of 50 bottles of Apricola gave unbiased estimates of 331 and this uh, sample size 50, 98% confidence interval for mu. Okay, so we can easily do this by using this formula. The manufacturer claims that the mean volume of juice in all bottles is triple three. Okay, we have to check whether triple three is here or not. Triple three is not here, so his claim is not justified. Yeah. 
His claim is not justified. No, because this is not in the confidence interval. You can take the screenshot if you want of the solution. Well, this question is simple, so I'm leaving this. This is of proportion, population proportion. So 2z and PSQS over NS. This is NS. You can write N or N is both are fine. Next question 42. First, uh, Jack has to choose a random sample of eight people from 750 members of a sport club, sports club. Explain briefly, explain fully how he can use random numbers to choose the samples. This is so simple. I discussed this thing in my first lecture. Number one, number all the members from this range, select sample of required size generate and select random three digit numbers omit repeats and numbers over greater than 750 so you have to do three things number one number all the members from this range then select the sample of the required size and then generate and select random three digit numbers through your calculator if table is not given and then omit repeats and numbers discard numbers over 750 I mean, the numbers which are greater than 750, you just need to discard those numbers. And you have to remit, uh, omit repeats as well. Unbiased estimates, I'm leaving this. You all know how to do this part. Explain briefly what is meant by population in this question. So basically, population of means in this question means amounts in dollar. See, it's given. How much they spend last week in the club? So amount in dollar. This is the population. Amount in dollars spent by all club members last week in coffee, cafe. Or just, you just write amount in dollars. Amount is spent in dollars. Uh, I think I should leave this question because this is 98% confidence interval with this given. So, uh, sorry, we just need to make uh, construct 98% confidence interval for 150 size. So, you can do this yourself. A random uh, variable x has Poisson distribution. Find this probability. This is so simple. You all know how to calculate this probability. You have done Poisson. So, you just need to take this number 0, 1, 2, 1 minus these numbers, probability of these numbers. Find the probability that x is 3 given that x is greater or equal to 3. This is the conditional probability. You have done this in S1. You just need to do this thing. This is the formula of conditional probability. 3 and greater or equal to 3 and this number should be here. So the answer of part 1 should be here and the common of these two should be here. So this answer equals to 3 is here and this answer is here. Random num uh, samples of 120 values of x are taken. Describe fully the distribution of sample mean. Because of this sample size, x bar is normal. Mu sigma square over n. It's here. And the value of mu is 3.2. And we, uh, you know, uh, lambda is mu. Let me write this here. Mu is lambda, which is 3.2 and variance is also lambda 3.2 according to clt you need to use this thing find the probability the mean of this is uh, less than 3.3 so less than 3.3 is so simple you have this information and you can just need you just need to put this here Now the next question.
45. A population has mean 7 and standard deviation 3. A random sample of size n is chosen from this population. Write down the mean and standard deviation of distribution of this. So mean is 7 and standard deviation will be 3 upon under root n because sigma cap square is 3 square upon n. Under what circumstances does the sample mean have a normal distribution? If population is normal, if given population is normal, then distribution is normal. Sample mean, I mean the distribution of x bar will be normal. If it's given in the question that population is normal, then the distribution of x bar will be normal. An approximately normal distribution for large sample size if the sample size is large, then x bar will be normal. So I, let me repeat this. Under what circumstances does the sample mean have a normal distribution? If population, if it's mentioned population is normal and sigma square is known, then x, pop, uh, x bar will always be normal. Sample mean means x bar. This will always be normal when x is normal. I discussed this thing in detail in my first lecture. An approximately normal means CLT. For large sample size, it can be normal because of CLT. This question is simple. You can just uh, check the solution. Give one condition for this to be reliable result. Uh, in a sample of 50 students, B College 18 support the football club, uh, Real Madrid, Calculate an approximate 98% confidence interval for this who support give one reason for this result to be reliable It is a random sample. So this result is reliable Let me check this question uh, the second part is important this part First part is simple. You just need to use this formula and get the confidence interval. You have standard deviation, you have sample size, you have everything. Write down the probability that the whole of 99% confidence interval will lie below the population mean. So what's the probability below the population mean? This means, see this is 99% and in this region mu lies mu lies in this region. So the whole 99% confidence interval below uh, the mu, the probability will be 0.5%. This is the answer. This is 0.5%, but the answer is this. This part. Now the next question. 48. Unbiased estimates. So unbiased estimates are simple. You don't need to. Uh, this is so simple. The unbiased estimates. Uh, you can do this yourself. Part 2. Using the values found in part 1, calculate an unbiased estimate of probability that the mean length of further random sample of 80 insects of this kind is greater than 53. So this is simple. Uh, this is the result of first part. 752, this is here and this is here. The exact value is here. Never use estimated value, always use the exact value. And we need this probability. So this part is simple, you can do this yourself. You can just uh, check the solution. Forty-nine. 
in this question uh, the first part is <coughs> I'm sorry in order to obtain a random sample of people who live in her town Jane chooses people at random from the telephone directory for her town give a reason why Jane's method will not give a random sample of people who live in the town this is so simple the directory excludes people without phones I mean the people who don't have phones they don't have they, their number will not be in the directory so Jane now uses a valid method to choose a random sample of 200 uh, and finds that 38 live in uh, live in apartments calculate 95 percent proportion so this is simple this is PS and this is the formula of PS and this is the way to get this Jane uses the same sample to give a confidence interval with 0.1 get x percent this is again simple just use with formula this formula when you multiply this thing by 2 you can get the with formula this number is 0.1 get the value of c and this value of z is here use your calculator and get this area or you can get this area through table and then uh, this area and this area are same so you can easily get this i have discussed this uh, a type of this question earlier in this lecture Fifty. The next question. A random sum variable. Sorry, a random variable has mean mu and variance sigma square. Uh, the mean of random sample of n values of x is x bar. Give expression for this and this. So this is so simple. You all know. Okay, if x is n, then x bar for large sample size is mu sigma square over n so you just need to write this thing here mu sigma square over n next the heights in centimeters of adult males in b are normally distributed with mean this and standard deviation this so population is normal find the probability that the mean height of a random sample of 12 adults males from this is less than 176 this is simple you just need to get this probability it's here it stayed with the reason whether it was necessary to use the central limit theorem no because the population is normal when population is normal and sigma square is known so there there is no need to use clt question 51 mary wants to choose one student at random from a b and c she throws two fair coins. If both coins show tails, she will choose A. If both coins show heads, she will choose B. If the coin, if the coin show one uh, of E, she will choose Charlie C. Explain why this is not a fair method for choosing the student. Not fair as probability one of each is greater than the probability of heads and tails. One of each has probability one upon two and both has probability 1 upon 4 so this method is not fair describe how mary could use the two coins to give a fair method for choosing the result choose uh, charlie only if either one or uh, either for this op option or this option only if head appears first and then tails throw coins again if tails appears first and then heads i mean charlie should have this option just this option or just this option not both the options Because uh, all three uh, students must have same probability. They all should get an equal chance uh, of being selected. Calculate and analyze wise estimates. I'm leaving this part. Use the values from this. Estimate the probability mean length of a random sample of 50 is this. Since sample size is large, population is unknown. So we have to use CLT. According to CLT, X bar is normal. You can easily get this probability uh, whether or not it was necessary to use CLT. It, it, yeah, it was necessary because uh, population is unknown. As distribution of x bar is assumed to be normal uh, even though distribution of x is unknown. So when distribution of x is unknown then we always use CLT for large sample size. 
I'm leaving uh, the first two parts of this question. I'm just discussing the last part. Two more random samples of plums of this type are taken and 98% confidence interval for mu is calculated from each sample. Find the probability that neither of these two intervals contains mu. This is so simple. See, uh, you made confidence interval for 98%. So not including mu, the probability is 2%. So you just need to write 2% power 2. This thing. Just write 2% power 2. Because uh, not including mu has probability 2%. And including mu probability is 98%. So not including means 2% times 2%, which means this thing. Now the next question. 55, uh, well, the first part is get x bar. You all know how to get x bar. Then we need confidence interval 92%. So it will be 96. This is the value. This is the confidence interval. Explain what is meant by 92% confidence interval for mu. This means 92% uh, of these intervals will contain mu. This is so simple. Means we are 92% sure that uh, our in interval con uh, contains mu. Explain what is meant by saying that a sample is random when every person, each possible sample of this size is equally likely. So each possible sample of this type is equally likely when it's equally likely. So it means random equally likely means random. This means equal, random. This question is simple, so I'm leaving this. If you want to check the solution, you can. Unbiased estimates, 95% confidence interval. You can do this question yourself. You can just take the screenshot if you want. This question is again very simple. We just need 95% of confidence interval. We have to use CLT because population is unknown. Sixty-two. The score on one throw of a four-sided die is denoted by random variable x with probability. Show that variance is 1.25. You have done this in S1. How to get the variance of discrete random variable you did this in s1 this is the formula of variance you can find this formula in mf19 as well so by using this formula you can easily get variance the die is thrown 300 times the score on each throw is noted and the mean x bar is found uh, find this probability so this is so simple uh, we have a mean of this and we have variance of this so for large sample size, x bar is approximately normal, so we can easily get this probability. Justify the use of, since uh, sample size is large. For large sample size, we use CLT. This is CLT. 63. Unbiased estimates. I'm leaving this. You know the formulas. Mahmood, uh, throws a coin 400 times and finds that it shows heads 184 times uh, probability so simple ps is 184 upon 400 confidence interval for p this is the formula you can easily do this uh, the coin is not fair he says that he claims that the coin is not fair use your answer comment on this claim his claim is not justified as 0.5 lies within cl you know the probability of uh, head uh, is 0 0.5 when the coin is fair since 0 0.5 lies in in this interval so his claim is not justified his results a uh, result of 184 heads in one 400 throws gives an alpha percent confidence interval for p with with this get the value of alpha this is so simple just use with formula get z and utilize z get this area Uh, this is PS, so I'm leaving this. This question is simple. You can do this yourself. 
67 and the last question is uh, oh my god we have a lot of question to cover 67 so many questions in this book first part is simple second part is also simple uh, part 3 let me check part 3 the government has a list of all households in N numbered from this to this. Describe briefly how to use random numbers to select 150 household from this list. You just, you know this method. Uh, num like num uh, num we already have numbers, so number all the members if you want. You can say this. Generate and uh, select four digit numbers. Each digit 0 to 9. Uh, this is the random number. The random number lies between 0 to 9. Just leave this thing. Generate and select four digit numbers. Ignore numbers greater than this ignore repeats you all know how to select samples through random number sampling number one number all the members then select the sample of the required size and generate four digit numbers through your calculator and ignore repeats ignore numbers which are greater than this size 68 i'm leaving this because this question is simple Now, this question is important, the, especially the last part. 50 random samples of size 80 were taken. 98% confidence interval for the population mu was found from each sample. Find the number of these 50 confidence interval that would be expected to include the true value of mu. See, 98% means you are 98% sure that your mu lies uh, in this interval. So, 98% of 50 there are 50 samples, so you just need to take 98% of 50. So 98% of 50 makes 49. So you are sure that in 49 samples mu lies. And there is just one sample in which mu does not lie. So just take 98% of 50. This uh, last part is important. Four random samples of size 10 are taken and a 96% confidence interval for the population means is found from each sample. Find the probability that uh, these four confidence interval all include the true value of the population mean. This is so simple. You just need to take a 96% uh, power 4. It's here. Because uh, you are sure 96, I mean you are 96% sure that your mu lies uh, in this interval. So you just take uh, 96 percent of power four. J wishes to choose a representative sample of five from 82 members from her school year. She considers going into the canteen and choosing a table with five students from her year sitting at it using these five people as a sample give two reasons why this method is unsatisfactory this sample is not random she is only choosing students who go to canteen number one she may choose five people who are a group of friends so this uh, way of sample uh, taking sample is not random now she decides to use another way uh, she numbers all the students in her from 1 to 82 then she uses her calculator and generates these numbers. From these numbers, she obtains these numbers. Explain how she obtained these students from the list of numbers. Select two digit numbers like 2, 3, 1, 4, 9, 2 and omit repeats and numbers greater than 82. This is the way to select samples from random number uh, extract. She needs to select two numbers from this extract, omit repeats and omit numbers which are greater than the uh, requirement now this uh, second part is important the first part is simple uh, you know how to uh, construct the confidence interval now the second part is the experiment is repeated and another 97 percent confidence interval is found find the probability that exactly one of the two intervals includes the true value of mu this is so simple that means 97 percent in this uh, this includes mu and three percent does not include mu so just need to use this thing 97 percent 3 percent plus 3 percent into 97 percent just do this and get the answer or use binomial this is your choice let me uh, 
do this in this way. This method is perfectly fine. She, this is going to use binomial and this is perfectly fine. I'm using this another way, mu, mu cap. mu cap mu you did this in s1 simple probability this is 0.97 and this is 0 0.03 then 0 0.03 and then 0 0.97 the answer will be 0 0.0582 and you can even use factorial you can even use this method u mu mu cap to factorial it's your choice you can do the, in this way as well Now the next question, 73, first part, I'm leaving the first part. The next part, each student's mark is a scale using the formula y is equal to 1.5x plus 10. Find the, find estimates of the population and mean and variance. So this is simple, you have done this in a linear combination of normal variables. You all know when uh, in mean, there, there, there is no problem. You just need to use this property ax plus b e x plus b so by using this property you can get this and variance may you just need to square this this is of linear combination of normal variables so i'm leaving this here 74 the mean and standard deviation is this uh, according to clt because population is unknown so we have to use clt for large sample we use clt and we can easily get the probability whether it was necessary to assume the uh, normal there is no need to assume this because for large samples x bar is approximately normal this is the application of clt no as n greater or equal to 30 clt is applied this question is simple so i'm leaving this we have done a question of this type as well you can take the screenshot of this question if you want. Well, the next question. Seventy-seven. First part. I'm leaving the first part, and this is the question of linear combination of normal variables. So I'm leaving this as well. If you want to check the solution, you can y minus x. Get mean and then get variance and then get the probability. Random. Random means there is no bias, and each employee has equal chance of being chosen. A researcher is, is investigating the lens in kilometers of journeys to work for the of the employees at a certain firm. She takes a random sample of 10. Random means uh, no bias and each employee has uh, equal chance of being selected. This is her sample. Uh, find the unbiased. We can do this. State what is meant by population in this context. So population means distances traveled by all employees at, uh, at the firm. This unit will tell you, just understand the unit. So unit will tell you the population, about the population. Kilometer means distance. So distances traveled by all employees by, at the firm. So under, always understand population with the help of a unit. If it says dollar, then it's uh, amount. If it says kilometers, then it means distances. Uh, this question is simple, so I'm leaving this. This is the repeated question. You can take the screenshot of this question if you want. This is also a simple question. Uh, sample size is large, so according to CLT, X bar is normal, and you can easily get the probability. 
give a reason uh, for using a sample rather than the whole population because if sampling is less time consuming or sampling is cost effective you can give any reason 95 percent confidence interval and the claim is 64.7 and the question is your answer to a to explain what conclusion can be drawn about whether the change has affected the 64.7 does not lie in the confidence interval so mean height has been affected this is simple poison you have done this in just you just need to add these two probabilities these two lambdas this is 4.1 also oh, so sorry this is lab 3.9 and get this probability 4 so 3.9 and this number is here random sample of 75 so x bar is approximately normal according to clt lambda lambda upon ns so lambda is mu and this is 1.6 over 75 because this is x bar is approximately normal find this probability this is simple explain whether the central limit theorem was used in the part 2 yes exactly because for a large sample size x bar is normal n is large i'm leaving this it's uh, unbiased estimates question now this is the next question 86 we need the confidence interval we have all the information since a sample size is large we don't need to use a uh, central limit here because the distribution is norm normal so when distribution is normal and sigma square is known we never use clt uh, alpha percent this is simple you can use the width formula and get the answer again you have to use the width formula to get the answer you can just take the screenshot this question is important dominic wishes to choose a random sam uh, sample of five students from 150 in his year he numbers the student from one to 150 then he uses calculator generate five random numbers between 0 and 1 he multiplies each number by 150 that means he's doing this thing five times n so sorry 150 times n and rounds up to the next whole number now this is very important whatever the number he will get he rounds up to the next number what if he would get 139.1 he would write 140 so make sure you understand this thing Part 1. Dominic's first random number is this. Find the student's number that is produced by this random number. This is so simple. You just need to multiply this by 150. 58.8, so 59. Even if we had 58.1, the number would be 59. Because he always rounds the number to the next number. Rounds up to the next whole number. Dominic's second student number is 104. Find the possible random number that would produce this student number. C. Uh, the least possible value of 104 in one decimal is 103.1 and the greatest possible value will be 103.9. See, this number, you can get this number when you have this range, 103.1 to 103.9. Because if you get 103.1, you will round this number to next number 104. Because it's mentioned, he rounds up to the next whole number. Whatever the answer he will get, he rounds up to the next whole number to give a student number. So 104, this would could be in this range, 103.1 to 103.9. So you just need to use this formula, a 150n number. So number is 104 and 150, you just need to divide 104 by 150 to get this. I mean 103.1 divided by 150, 103.9 divided by 150, the calculator uh, uh, would, the possible values calculator could give you are these, are they in this, are in this range. So 103.1 divided by 150, 103.9 divided by 150, you will get this range, your calculator could give you number in this range to get this number. Explain briefly why five random numbers may not be enough to produce a sample of five students number because of possible repeats. If you generate five numbers and if number would repeat, then this, this, these five numbers would not be enough to select the sample of same size five of size five. 
so if you uh, want to select the sample of size 5 you must generate more numbers at least 7 or 8 numbers in order to avoid the repeats i think this will be the last question yes this is the last question of this lecture uh, confidence interval you all know x bar is given i mean you can get x bar through this information and sigma cap is square through this information and confidence interval uh, use case c because we have sigma cap square use your answer to part one to comment on whether the machine may be working properly okay so a variable x takes these values and these values are generated by uh, random by a machine so get the mean of these numbers get the exact mean so the mean of these numbers will be five i guess i'm sorry let me check this what is the mean the mean of these number is three this is the true mean true mean of uh, these numbers and since this mean does not lie in this confidence interval therefore the machine is not working properly machine is not working properly because con 3 does not include 3 does not lie in this confidence interval you can view the solution you can uh, take the screenshot of this solution now if machine would uh, have worked properly uh, then we would get uh, this number in this range since this number is not in this range therefore machine is not working properly that's the answer i hope this lecture will help uh, you to understand the uh, how to solve the questions of sampling but again i will uh, recommend you all to uh, watch my first lecture on sampling to understand the concepts in detail and then uh, watch this lecture do the question sampling in fact an important advice for me and for everyone be sincere to everyone we should be sincere to others Allah Hafiz